coming up next, book in its epic finale to To Kill a Mockingbird. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Booking It. I'm your humble and eloquent host, Cooper Cobbs, and joining me today are two of our three panelists, Matthew Killingsworth. Howdy. Isaiah Recci. Lee. And fortunately, Tanner is not here with us today. No, but he is not. the show must go on. Also guys, I really hope that you enjoyed the first episode of the screening. If you haven't, go ahead and head over there on Apple Podcasts or any of your fa- favorite, favorite podcasting app or YouTube and make sure you check that out. We're really excited. We think it's going to be a good podcast. Um, here we are. Episode four, our first ever fourth episode on a book. We probably could have done four on Word and the Wolf King, honestly. But, yeah. Here we are. Chicken Mockbird Part 4. Should we get into it, guys? Or? Yeah. I, no, mean, I think we should we'll... just stop right now. <laughs> 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 Thanks for the encouragement. Do, do, do we have any, <laughs> any more banter or are we, are we good? This podcast has never been good at banter. I think we need to get better at that. But yeah, I think I don't. Yeah, think I, no. I don't. We actually, we actually, uh, were worried about not getting enough good, good information for three or good content for three full episodes. But turns out we need to do an extra fourth one because right. we, yeah. hey, we had a lot to thing. say about. This is episode thirty. Oh no! Wow, way. it's thirty, 30 whole did his episodes. Math almost, almost thirty straight weeks. I think it's been like twenty. 20- seven straight weeks okay oh because we did take a one week break at one point yeah we did actually no because the uh episode that shall not be named that has now since been deleted remember we released that one no actually i don't i actually don't remember that apologies and updates oh i said it (laughs) (laughs) yes those of you may not know in between episodes two and three, we released like a two minute. It was just me, <laughs> and it was a very like a it was like a mournful tone. Was like, it was pretty bad. Sorry. Oh man. Don't have an episode. <laughs> that was terrible. Yeah. I actually forgot yeah. about it. Yeah, we deleted it. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was way better to just show up with no episode than for y'all to hear that. It was pretty bad, and plus yeah. we basically. It was like the updates part of it pretty much got scrapped. Yeah. And the next episode, it, it was completely so. inaccurate because we changed our decision afterwards. Yeah. So. It was, yeah. It was. It was. Yeah. We, <laughs> it shall not be mentioned. <laughs> Regardless, <laughs> we are a lot uh, w- more well trained and well more experienced now. That mm-hmm. didn't really make sense, but you know what I meant. It's <laughs> all pretty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Much more eloquent. Be now. Eloquent here. <laughs> <laughs> so. Anyway. Episode 4, we're going to be focusing mostly on the trial today, since we didn't get around to it last episode. The trial. So before we kind of... Yeah, the trial. So before Co- we get Cooper into, wants to give everybody a word of warning, you know, for all the young listeners. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he usually yeah. likes to say it, but I wanted to say it, so he couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Matthew often does this to me. Anyway. Um, <laughs> trial scene. So before we get more specific, anything you guys want to say about the trial? Mm. let's get more specific <laughs> all right so mostly it's going to be focusing kind of as a result and we're not going to be talking directly about the trial but we can too so first question you think the atticus was an idealist to firmly believe in the integrity of our courts and in the jury system and that was a direct quote by the way well i guess that's yeah it's it's kind of part of a lawyer's job right i mean I, I just feel like in all books where there's a lawyer, that the lawyer is always like, the courts the courts are like, that's what makes America. Like, the, the courts settle all yeah. things. They are fully the just. The great equalizer. And I feel like, yeah, they them. definitely praise them more than courts actually deserve. Especially in this book. Yeah. Because, obviously, they don't, uh, they don't set Tom Robinson free. They convict him just because... A white man is, uh, is a uh, what? What do you call it? Lawsuiting him. <laughs> well, he's being prosecuted. Yeah, he's is prosecuting him, and that's literally the only reason. Because nobody, like it, it said in the book, nobody actually thought. Like there was no doubt in anybody's mind that Tom Robinson was innocent. Like the way yeah. the trial went down, it was entirely clear. 
and um, they still sided with Mr. Ewell because he was white. Evil. Yeah. So it definitely, I mean, regardless of what Atticus thought, they are not perfect. Yeah. And that's but also, again, that's true in real life, too. I mean, I think we, it wasn't this week, but it was last week. Tanner's mom uh, was talking about how you know, she was part of a jury, and they convicted a man who was accused of domestic abuse. And, like, there was no doubt in any of the jurors' minds, right? Mm-hmm. But, like, staring that person in the face and knowing that you sent them, sentenced them to prison, uh, you know, and you're like, did, and she, she said... Did, did you see where I, I, I my where my car is parked? You know, did you follow me home? It's kind of scary, is what she yeah. said. Yeah, yeah. So we think and about that's, that too. And and that's actually like when she was making the right decision. Can you imagine convicting someone yeah, who is exactly. completely innocent, staring them in the face and saying, "I know you're innocent, but I'm gonna send you to jail for the rest of your life." And yeah, yeah. That's even. But then again, that's even yeah. worse. It it is just true. I mean, yeah. It's like if you didn't believe that the court was going to be fair why would you even do it like if you were trying to defend someone you thought the court was going to be unfair against them like why would you even take the job or anything yeah. or try oh, well, to do in, it in Atticus's case that's he just had to he said he said he knew from the beginning that he had a very very small chance I think he actually mm-hmm. might have used the word oh, yeah, yeah. impossible yeah, he at said, some point yeah, but, Scott asked yeah. him do we have a chance and he said no yeah exactly he said he had no chance and he was right, but he still had to do it. He still had to try, just for Tom Robinson's sake. So, Jim also said this after the trial. Christian judges and lawyers can't make up for heathen juries. What do you guys... Why do you think we have a jury system in the first place? So it's not one man deciding the entire thing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or one man or woman? <laughs> um, yeah. But, like, I just think of our mock trial last year, and... That it was really just like they had a jury, but the jury didn't make the final decision for some right, reason. I don't really know why, but the and judge Matthew did. Has pre- been prejudiced against the judge because he decided against Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, how? <laughs> <laughs> They're just being nice to other team. That's but that's yeah. that's what I'm saying. That's if one man has sympathy or anything <laughs> makes their decision on stuff. anything like that, then that's unfair and that's unjust. You have to make the decision on what's true and what's. Like, what evidence is presented in the case and not based on any outside emotions or feelings towards that person. And so that's why it's a group of people from all random backgrounds, all just completely, like, random people, uh, honest citizens who are going to make the choice together instead of one person who may feel a certain way about the defendant or the prosecutor. And that's how the case should be. I mean, it's safe to say that if Judge Taylor presided over this case that Tom would have been innocent, right? He would have been declared innocent. See, I mean, I think, but that's what I was saying. Everybody in the in the room, everyone in the room knew that Tom was innocent, including yeah. all the jurors, but they still voted against him. Which or ruled make against any him. sense. But yeah, it's just because they didn't want to, like, change the way of their society, and that's a really screwy reason, and that's, like... That's kind of defeats the purpose of even having a jury because the whole reason you do it is so that one person's, I guess, like outside interests or personal interests or whatever don't get in the way of it. But they, it was such a big interest to everybody as a whole in that uh, region, I guess, that or at that time and at that region that it still affected the trial greatly. Yeah. Which really proves that like white people back then could have just gone and sued black people all the time in one cases for absolutely nothing probably so do you think that yeah do you think that despite you know the courts obviously not being perfect do you think that the juror system is one of the best systems available and that the american courts are uh, in fact the great i think leveler they said in the book uh i mean god is the great leveler and the greatest court and the most just judge that there can be that's right but as far as uh, a human devised system on like a level of fairness and how often it's fair. I guess you could call it the rate of fairness. Uh, <laughs> I, I would agree that, yeah, America has one of the most powerful court systems and 
uh, definitely the one of the best working. Not that I know a whole lot of other ones. Not now that I think about it, but that's true. That's true. I, guess, <laughs> I can't I guess like still kind of arguing <laughs> judge versus jury here. Yeah, but I mean, as far as judge versus jury, I definitely think jury is a better option than just a judge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely think that too. Cause like less of a chance of them being biased with a jury, cause there's a lot of them there to do it um but with the judge it's just one person has to decide and if let's say that judge knew the person that he was going to convict or like say that they were innocent then it could affect how the whole trial goes yeah but with the jury there's way less of a chance of that definitely so a lot of times the judge like matthew said have less bias or isaiah think isaiah Isaiah said it sorry they'll have less bias do you think that's something to take into consideration you still think that having the people decide is still more of a uh, strength of a system. I mean, I think that it's just better of a chance of it being, like, or um, a lot less of a chance of it being biased with many people in a jury. And, and plus, in capital punishment, it does ha- it does have to take a, a, a unanimous, right. unanimous yes, vote. Yes, it does. Capital Can punishment does. Unanimous. But okay. then again, weird. like, no, no court system is ever going to be perfect. That's devised yeah. by man. Like, even the highest, like, most uh, well-thought-out, planned, like, Supreme Court. Right. Like, when, when, I, when I learned how it worked, my dad was explaining it to even me because he's Court. a lawyer and he knows about stuff like that. And he was, he was telling me about how it works and that they appoint them for life. So they are a Supreme Court judge or justice until they decide to quit or until they die. Um, those, like, you, they cannot be fired. No amount of... You know, presidents, vice presidents, senate votes, whatever. Nobody can remove them from that position, so that they have no reason to be biased, and so that they don't have to worry about like some powerful person them them like rejecting the powerful mm-hmm. person's uh, p- point of view, I guess, and then getting you know destroyed by the powerful person b- because of whatever influence he has. But that then, so I was like, that's pretty genius. Why don't we do that for all courts, and they'll all be perfect. And he was like, "Well, it's mm-hmm. still un- it's still imperfect even then because to get to the Supreme Court, you you're gonna have like supporters and people helping you along, donating and whatever. And so, like, it's a possibility that justices will still be biased towards like maybe they ha- get a case and want someone that donated a lot of money to their campaign or, or like something they support." calls and says well i need you to rule this way on the case remember all that stuff i did for you remember when i've helped you out and then they'll so i mean it's not perfect any way like any way you can think of it it's not going to be perfect but i think yeah. that america's way of resolving uh issues is definitely one of the best so obviously after the court after a little while uh tom decides to make a break for it and he uh he gets killed like ran while he was in in prison what do you think that Tom ran in the first place. He was in prison, and he he didn't deserve to be there. And I guess he he weighed his options, and he basically ignored everything that Atticus told him about him still having a chance to be freed at the yeah. appeal. And he was like, my two options, stay here the rest of my life and live a terrible life in prison, or just risk the chance of dying to see if I can escape. And he decided that he didn't want a boring prison life the rest of his life that came to nothing. He wanted to have the chance of freedom at all costs, even if it meant he would die trying. And he did die trying. Do you think that it was? Do you, you think he did have a good chance? I think so. I mean, if it was a new group of jurors, and I, I think, honestly, he, I don't know about a good chance, but he definitely had a chance. I would, I mean, I would at least wait it out and chill out in prison for like a month or whatever until the appeal and then at least try that. And if that didn't work, then maybe I'd run for it. But, I mean, I don't know. I would have definitely waited for the appeal. But, I mean, I can't. you can't blame Tom Robinson. He was desperate. He, he was confused. Everyone was treating him unfairly when all he wanted to do was help out a poor farm girl whose dad beat her all the time. Yeah. Do you think, though, that... Um, that um, oh, yeah, sorry. So, so I think it was Heck Tate, uh, yeah. the uh, sheriff, said what a name. that... Um, <laughs> yeah, that shooting Tom was the same thing as like shooting a cripple. Do you, do you agree with that? Well, I don't. Well, I don't think it'd be like really the same thing as that, because <laughs> a crippled person is obviously no. someone who's like 
legs are, like or arms don't work and um i think well, technically one of his arms doesn't work wait, it doesn't no oh that's right oh yeah so i guess he would be shooting a cripple it yeah. it, it was a weird way to say it though like hectate was like it would be like shooting a cripple no it would literally be shooting a cripple because if his arm doesn't work then <laughs> yeah. he's basically a cripple so i don't uh-huh. know i guess i agree sure <laughs> how about you cooper <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm, uh, I mean, he was running, and he was told to stop. And I mean, I, I feel bad, obviously, if I was, and I would feel bad that he was shot. But I don't know what I would have done if I was a police officer, there, an officer, what I would have right. done. So I don't know. I mean, yeah, uh, sure, shooting a cripple, but a cripple who is. I don't know. Acting, right? It's it's a complicated it's a case. Question. A cripple who was mm-hmm. yeah. running away from prison where they were supposed to be, even though the the decision to put him there was uh, wrong. So it was, yeah. Right. But from from the from the again, from the like, prison so. guard's point of view, if a prisoner was running away and you told them to stop already, then. I guess you like you're just supposed to shoot him. So that's all. That's what he was supposed to do. I guess that guy. It's yeah, exactly. really it's I mean, really the the court's fault. It's really the judge and the jury's fault. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah but it's also I mean it's also Tom's fault. I mean I don't want to put too much blame on him. He was under immense pressure, but he had a good chance in the appeal, and he threw it all away. He threw right. His, that's what I was saying. You know, that's what I was saying. Was wait till the suicide. wait till the appeal at least, and then if you want to run after the appeal, then why not? But might as well try your luck at the appeal if he gets worst case you're just going to go back to prison yeah but um i remember all these you know cases of these these black people getting shot by police officers right there was that one case where the guy you're talking about like last year he was being arrested by an officer yeah. yeah yeah we don't but anyway he's being arrested by an officer and the officer told him to stop but he reached and he reached in his mm-hmm. car for something and yeah. the officer shot him and they called it racist. Yeah, and no. Like, no, he he was told to stop. There was a weapon in the car, you know. So it's all it's different. It's complete. Though. It's completely flipped. But anyway, honestly, because if it was a black cop shooting a white person who reached into the car after they were told to stop, then they would have been the hero of the earth. They would have been justified. They would have been, yeah. Oh, more than justified. <laughs> yeah. They would have been praised. But I mean, I'm not saying. Oh, definitely. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm not saying a cop saving who knows how many people from dying is a bad thing. I'm saying it's a good thing no matter what color the cop or the criminal is. It doesn't matter. I'm saying, like, it's it's the same thing either way. Yeah, exactly. So there was, a, there was another part in this book that I don't remember reading the first time, and it was Scout's teacher was talking about how bad the Nazis were because just around the time before World War II. And how the Nazis discriminated against the Jews and how unfair that was. Mm. But then, you know, Scott was saying how that same person had been, like, walking out of the courtroom that day with, I think, Miss Stephanie Meyer, right? That's her name. And and she was saying, you know, like, a bunch of racist stuff. And she's, I, I don't understand how people can be, you know, d- d- against, you know, n- the Nazis and yet, you know, be that racist yeah, and then and th- that was the point where the teacher got really upset about that and told her to shut up, right? No, I don't think she said it out loud. Here, let me see if I can find that spot. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Scout. Either way, Scout has a point. That that was a good yeah. thought on her part because that's true. All men are created equal means all men are created equal. There's there's no conditions, there's no exceptions, it's just, it's as simple as it can get, and yet, I don't think anyone has ever taken it that simply, and there's always something else that, you know, gets thrown into the mix, I guess, either way it is. Um, also, there's another interesting thing, it said that even though a lot of the townspeople despised Atticus for what he did with in defending Tom Robinson. They still reelected him yeah. to the state legislator unanimously. Yeah, no, that was weird. <laughs> and you're like, hold up. Why do you think they did that? 
I, I mean, maybe he was in that small little Macomb town. He might have very well been the only, like, or at least the best trained only lawyer. Only person running. <laughs> only person running or, like, the obviously <laughs> best choice if there was anyone else. You know, what's funny, though, is uh, I wonder if it was, I don't know. I don't want to speculate in Harpoli's mind, but if it was, I hate you for this, but I secretly respect you, and I wouldn't think of putting anybody Hon- else yeah, up there. Honestly, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how you could really hate Atticus, like actually hate him. But it's like the people knew that they were wrong in their hearts. It's like, yeah. I know I'm wrong, but I don't want yeah, to admit it. That's true. <laughs> anyway, so here we are at the last part of the book. So this is always really confusing, you know, the last part of the book. Like, who do you, who killed Bobby? Oh, Ewell? yeah. It is, that is very interesting. And Atticus was very convinced that Jim had done it, for whatever reason. Yeah. I I yeah. personally don't think Jim did it. I think it was most likely Boo Radley, and I kept. Yeah, that's probably. I kept expecting like Boo Radley was sitting there the whole time. Heck and um, Atticus were arguing about Jim doing it or not, and Boo was just sitting there. I kept expecting it to be like Boo Boo Radley speaks up. Oh, I did it, sir. And then they're like, Oh, well, it's fine. It's fine. We'll just. Off the records with that, it's fine. <laughs> That's what yeah, I expected yeah. to happen. But it did not mm-hmm. happen, so I don't know. Maybe Boo was just like, I'll let them sort this out. <laughs> yeah, well, Boo is not the most outgoing no, fellow, no, you know? a little bit of an introvert. Do you think it was right, though, they let Boo off the hook? Let him off the hook for what? For a... Uh... Self, I guess it was self defense, well, but yeah. he you know, saved they have two kids that an was right? old man I, chased yeah. them in the dark, grabbed them, like threw them on the ground, and tried to kill him with a knife. I mean, I don't think that's letting him off the hook. Yeah, I agree with what they did with letting him go. I mean, like Matthew just said, e- Mr. Ewell got let off the hook by getting killed because he would have hopefully gotten way worse <laughs> punishment than that. Ewell. It's Ewell. Whatever. Do you think that he was a coward, though, at the end, Mr. Ewell? Yeah, I think he was a coward the whole time. Was he ever not a coward? You know, it, it, the movie, um, and hopefully we'll get to talk about it on the screening, but the movie kind of portrays Mr. Ewell as that guy who is arrogant, who is kind of, um, you know, he thinks he's above everybody else, but at the end he was a coward, mm-hmm. right? But do you think that in the book he's portrayed that way? Like, just think think about it. No, I I'm I, not trying to I always thought of him as way. like I think you used the word or used the phrase "scum of the earth" to describe the evils um, in yeah. one of the former episodes, and I think that up until the trial point, everyone like I guess knew who he was, but they like he was kind of like that guy that like you think about Mister Evil, and then you're like, oh, I want to stop thinking about him. Or, like, something like that. And, like, because I feel like it's it was, like, it was almost like a little uh, show-off type thing, for want of better words. Like, he was just trying to get some attention, you know, put put the spotlight on himself a little bit so that everyone knew who he was. And also, like, throw a black guy in jail just because he was mad. I, I mean, I don't really think that he thought he was better than everyone else i thought he seemed kind of like insecure and just trying to get some attention from like the whole town that's what that's what i thought i I think there was something that said kind of like that in the book um in the trial part that was like he just wanted attention i think atticus might have said that I, i can't remember though so i think in this i think it was scout who said it Con- condemning or prosecuting Boo Riley would be like shooting mm-hmm. a mockingbird. Do you feel like that's more of a stretch, or do you think that's accurate? I think it's pretty accurate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, yes, but... You don't think that he should have at least been tried for doing what he did? What did he do? Kill Bob Ewell. I mean, like we just said, though, it was to defend... I thought you were talking about Tom Robinson. My bad. Um... Oh, no. to be tried. Uh, I don't think he should have been put on a trial or anything for that because he was defending two kids from someone. And that was the only thing he yeah, could do. 
I, I want to agree with that, but, I mean, it kind of is the law, even in that case, to go on trial for it, right? I mean... True. Nobody's going to get yes. away with killing anybody for any reason without going to court for it, unless, of course, you're, like, in a war and anyways. But, uh, yeah, no, I think... I mean, like, it's kind of scary when you think about, it. like, if you, if, you, if you agree with our belief here, you're saying, yeah, killing a person, no matter for what reason, is... And trying that person is kind of like shooting a mockingbird, you know. Yeah. It, I mean, that's a bit of yeah, a Yeah, I don't think trying him, I think condemning him would definitely be killing a mockingbird because he was really, really, the description that Atticus gave of a mockingbird earlier in yeah, the book, exactly. he fit it's, that it's, description perfectly. And he was literally just the yeah. guy looking out for them the, the entire time, minding his own business and jumping in when necessary, which wasn't very often. And he never did harm to anybody he was just, he had, you know, people told stories about him, but he was really not a bad guy. And to condemn him yeah. for defending two little kids, even if someone did, even if the attacker did end up dying in the process, then uh, condemning him for it would definitely be to kill a mockingbird. But uh, I think trying him for it, if it really was him, if they, if it really was him that stabbed him, then I think that that's just fair. Um, to America. Yeah. Fair to everybody, I guess. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that about wraps it up. But before we go do some donor shout outs, let's kind of provide a summary of our thoughts on Teal and Mockingbird. So, Isaiah, why don't you go first, real quick? I mean, I just thought it was a really good book. I really liked how it uh, had multiple lessons that the kids were going through throughout the book. And then how, like, Harper Lee, like, how she wrote everything about how it was then about, like, with everyone not liking blacks and being against them and all that, how she, like, knew her history and didn't change it or anything. Like, that's how it was, and to help teach us about that. Yeah, overall, it was a really good book. I also learned a lot from the book, like Isaiah was saying, about the time period. Uh, what am I trying to say? Specifically. <laughs> specifically. And, but... Um, <laughs> But also, I I really appreciated, like, she wrote it in such an entertaining way. Like, there's so many history or historical fiction novels that are just, like, dead boring that you don't want to read. And um, yeah. but she wrote it so interestingly. And, like, we talked about this before, her writing style, her, like, first person, but you read it like a third person type thing. I don't even know what to call it. We should probably look up the name for that if there is. I'm just going to call it Harper Lee style. Yeah. It's like it's like a it's like a recounting, you know. It's a for it's first person but right. recounting. It's, it's unique, but it's so good. It's, it's like a mix between the traditional first person and like Tolkien in The Hobbit, telling it third person, right. but not really. Yeah. It's really cool though. Yeah, it's really cool. Harper Lee style. It's its new name. Yep. But uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it as well. It's, I mean, it's it's almost a perfect novel. It's got strong morals and teaches you about life and how wrong it was, you know, and it's well written, like my this style is incredible, really entertaining, you get, it's just a great picture of what life was like, including the town, all the characters are drawn out, but uh, yeah, just overall, really great book, but you know who's also really great, mm -hmm. our donors, ha, <laughs> great transition, you guys can't mock that one, alright, alright, just want to assign a character from the story, alright, Isaiah, Isaiah, Nana. Nana? Um, it's my idea. All right, Matthew, Van Pappy and Wayla. Van Pappy and Wayla. Um, I'm trying to think of a couple in here. There isn't one, is there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, um, I just, just get, get a person who you're assuming has a wife and just give it to her. Okay. <laughs> or, or a woman who has a husband, whatever. Oh, I know. They can, they can be Dill's parents. Isaiah's grandparents. Isaiah. Oh, are you taking Oh, yeah, okay. Um, I don't know if Mr. Cunningham had a wife, but they can be the Cunninghams. The Cunninghams? All right, good idea. Yeah. Isaiah, your Uncle Sebi. My Uncle Sebi? Um, I give him Boo. Ooh. Nice. Matthew, Aunt Jenny, and Uncle Sam. Isaiah's. Oh, uh, more couples. Uncle um, Aunt. Aunt Jenny can be Aunt Stephanie, <laughs> and Uncle Sam can be Atticus. Ooh, nice. 
Um, I'm very sorry, Anjani. Okay, <laughs> Isaiah's cousins, Isaiah. Um, cousins, Let's see. Okay, my cousin Moses, uh, Dill. Why don't you do, like, friend, friend, no, do, like, Francis, right? Yeah, sure, we'll go with that. All right, Christopher. and last but not least, Christopher. Yeah. He can be Jim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, second main character. Oh, nice. nice All righty, well, thanks so much for listening. Please go to patreon.com forward slash booking it to become a donor. If you donate $10 or more, and actually $5 or more, you get a donor shout out. Make sure you check out the screening, brand new podcast. If you can't donate for whatever reason, please rate and review us, both podcasts. And also, don't forget to go check out Chris's podcast, Like Lightning, where he reads his uh, flash fiction. Or, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yep, check out the screening, rate and review us, support both podcasts, rate and review the screening. Until next time. Thanks for listening, and keep on booking it. <laughs>